Okay, so the first step uh, is to be able to make some observations uh, about the running time of the programs. Uh, and for analysis of algorithms, uh, that's easier than in a lot of uh, scientific disciplines, as we'll see. For a ex running example, we're going to use the so-called three-sum problem. Uh, and it's an easy-to-state problem. If you've got n distinct integers, how many triples sum to exactly zero? For example, uh, in this file, 8 ints.txt, uh, which has uh, uh, eight integers in it, uh, there's four triples that sum to zero. 30 minus 40, 10, 30 minus 20 minus 10, uh, and so forth. Uh, and so our goal is to write a program that uh, can compute this quantity uh, for any uh, input file, any set of n integers. Uh, this is actually uh, a, an extremely important computation that's deeply related to many problems in computational geometry, uh, which is a branch of computer science that uh, uh, covers the uh, uh, algorithms and underlying science uh, related to uh, graphics and movies and geometric models uh, of all sorts. So this is uh, actually an uh, important practical problem. Uh, but it's a simple one to uh, write code for. Uh, uh, you, any of you could uh, write down this program uh, without much effort. Uh, it's a, uh, got a <coughs> static method count that uh, is going to go ahead and uh, take an, an integer array uh, as argument. Uh, n is the, that's the number of integers, that's the length of the array. Uh, we'll start with a variable count equals zero. Uh, and then a triple for loop that checks each triple i, j, k. Uh, we go i from one to n, j from i plus one to n, and k from j plus one to n so that we get each triple just once. Uh, and then if i plus j, a i plus a j plus a k equals zero, we increment the count. Uh, and after that triple for loop, uh, we return the count. Uh, and then the main method uh, in this simple class uh, just reads in uh, all the integers uh, and prints out the count. So that's a brute force algorithm that uh, is a fine method for solving the three-sum problem. Now what we're interested in is uh, how much time does this take uh, as a function of n? Well, uh, one way to time a program is to uh, is just uh, look at the watch. Uh, if you have a stopwatch or look at the clock or your phone, uh, whatever you might need, uh, you can just uh, go ahead and, uh, and time it if you want. Uh, or uh, we have, uh, Java has as part of its standard library, a stopwatch uh, class that will uh, go ahead and uh, compute uh, elapsed time. Uh, uh, so, or uh, anytime you run a program, uh, if it's set up to easily take input of different sizes, uh, a natural thing to do uh, is just run it for bigger sizes. Uh, so for 8 ints, uh, this program takes uh, not too much time. Uh, for 1,000 ints, it takes half a second. Uh, for 2,000, it uh, takes more time. Uh, that's 3.7 seconds. I run it again, still takes 3.7 seconds for 4,000. So each time we're doubling the size of the input and uh, it's definitely taking uh, more time each time. Uh, and actually, as we'll see, uh, if uh, programmers uh, who get in the habit of testing the running time of their program in this way uh, can get so that uh, you can actually pretty easily and quickly uh, evaluate uh, when it's going to finish. Uh, in fact, while you're waiting for it to finish, uh, you can often figure it out. Uh, so uh, that one took uh, 30 seconds for 4K, uh, and definitely uh, w we could figure out uh, how long it's going to take for 8K uh, before uh, it finishes. And you'll see how in just a second. I'm not going to wait right now. You can think about what, what you think. Uh, okay, so <coughs> um, that's empirical al analysis. Uh, run it for various input sizes and measure the running time. Now, uh, if this were uh, uh, some scientific problem where we were uh, counting something that happened in the natural world, the uh, number of ants on an anthill or whatever, 
uh, then uh, we'd have uh, only a few data points, uh, and we would try to understand what's going on by doing a plot of uh, our running time, uh, the quantity we're interested in on the y-axis, and the problem size uh, on the x-axis. Um, we get a curve like this. Uh, and actually, what scientists usually do, uh, because uh, so many problems fall into uh, uh, this class, is uh, do the plot as a log-log plot. Uh, and if you do it as a log-log plot, uh, very often uh, you'll get a straight line. Uh, and the slope of the straight line is the key to what's going on. In this case, the slope of the straight line is 3. Uh, and so you can uh, run what's called a regression to fit a late, the straight line through the data points. Uh, and then uh, it's not difficult to show, uh, to do the math to show that uh, if you get a straight line and the slope is b, then uh, your function is proportional to a uh, n to the b. That's called a power law. And that's true of many, many scientific problems, uh, including uh, most algorithms. Uh, so here's a little bit of the math uh, for that. Uh, so uh, the straight line means that uh, uh, since we did a log-log plot with powers of 2, that log base 2 of t of n equals b log, log of n plus c, uh, and we have our empirical values of b and c, and then if you uh, raise both sides of that equation to 2 to that power, uh, then you get uh, t of n equals a constant times n to the b. Uh, so, uh, right away, just from observation, uh, we have a pretty good model for the running time of our program. Uh, we can figure, we can do the math and figure out uh, that it seems as though the running time is about uh, 10 to the minus 10 times n cubed seconds. And we can use that hypothesis to go ahead and make predictions. Uh, just plug in for different values of n, and it says uh, it ought to take us uh, 400 seconds for 16,000. And 400 seconds is plenty of time, uh, but now we can go ahead and uh, invest in running that experiment, and sure enough, uh, we're pretty close to that 408 uh, seconds uh, when we run it. And now we can make a prediction for 32,000 or, uh, or for whatever else uh, we might be interested in. The model helps us do predictions without investing the expense to run the experiments. Uh, and in fact, uh, in this situation, uh, uh, if there is a power law, and again, uh, in a uh, very great majority of uh, computer uh, algorithm running times, it's going to be a power law. What we can do is just double the size of the input each time, the way we were, and then take the ratio of uh, the running times for n and 2n. Uh, and if you do that, uh, that ratio is going to converge to a constant. Uh, and in fact, the log of the ratio is going to converge uh, to that constant, which is the exponent of n in the running time. Uh, and just need a little uh, math to uh, check that one, uh, but that's uh, a very uh, easy and natural way uh, to go ahead and predict running times. So that's what I said before is, that, so we have this quick way to estimate B in the power law relationship. Uh, how do we estimate A? Uh, well, we can just run it and solve for A. Uh, so once we've decided that that exponent is three, let's run it for some big N, uh, and we get a pretty close model to the one we had from uh, plotting things. Uh, so it's almost identical hypothesis, uh, and we just got it by uh, running the program uh, doubling in each time. Uh, <coughs> okay, so uh, there's a lot of effects in uh, trying to understand uh, the running time of a program on, on your machine. <coughs> So key uh, effects are independent of what computer it is, and that's the algorithm you're using and what's the data. Uh, and that's going to really determine the exponent in the power law. Uh, and then there's a lot of uh, system-dependent effects. Uh, what kind of hardware do you have? Do you have a fast computer or a slow one? What kind of software? What's going on in your computer? All of those things really determine uh, the constant A in the power law. Uh, so uh, in modern systems, there's so much going on uh, in the hardware and software 
it's sometimes difficult to get uh, really precise measurements. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, we don't have to sacrifice animals or fly to another planet uh, the way they do in other sciences. Uh, we can just run a huge number of experiments and uh, usually uh, take care of uh, understanding these kinds of effects.